I'm Candace. So right now, I want you to write down the names of as many people that you can think of who are important in your life. Let's go. All right, so hopefully you wrote down the names of everyone that you could think of Who's important in your life? The people in your class, at church, your family, your team, all of the people that you know in a very personal way. Now, you know these people's names because they mean something to you, right? And if you're anything like me, you hope that you mean something to them in return. Now, that's why I think it really stings when people don't get your name right. I mean, is there anything worse than someone getting your name wrong? When you tell them your name and they forget? Or when they should know your name, but they still just cannot get it right? Take a look at this. Candace. Now, I spell my name with an I, but that's nothing compared to this. Now check this out. So I've always gone to the same schools that my big sister has gone to, and I've always had the same teachers. And they were always calling me Tiffany her name. So once we were sitting in class and the teacher saying, Tiffany, 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 and I'm minding my business because my name isn't Tiffany, so why in the world would I respond to that? And then I realized, oh, she's calling on me. And it was so embarrassing. Now, of course, when the barista at Starbucks or the substitute teacher called you by the wrong name, you don't really correct them, right? You just move on because chances are high that the relationship ends right there as soon as I walk out of the store with my drink. It's done. Them calling you the wrong name doesn't really impact your life beyond that very moment. You're not losing sleep because the guy in the Starbucks added an A instead of an I in Candace. Or the substitute teacher couldn't figure out how to actually pronounce Aaron. But if your best friend your coach, your group leader got your name wrong? If they misspelled it or mispronounced it or even forgot your name, well, that hurts. Why? Because they're supposed to be the people who really know you, right? They're the game-changing, important relationships in your life. They are the people that you listen to, that you lean on, the ones that you turn to, right? When you're in need. They are the people that you want to know your name because with them, it's personal. Now, the reality is we all want somebody to know our name. We all want to feel like someone knows us in a real way. It makes us feel important. It helps us to feel seen. You see, when someone really knows our name, it's a sign that they know us. And that feels personal. So many of us spend a lot of time looking for a friendship like that. We want the BFF or someone who knows everything about us from our favorite colors to our favorite shows to the, whatever it is that we are binge watching when we're supposed to be sleeping, right? The kind of friendship where someone understands us without even saying a word. We want someone who cares about us, values us, and stays right close to us. We want a friend who knows our name because they know us in a real and a personal way. But the reality is, you already have that. Do you know that? You already have a person in your life who knows you and loves you that way. And you know who that person is? That person is Jesus. Now, let me just stop here and acknowledge what you might be thinking. Of course, we're talking about Jesus. You're probably supposed to say that, Candace. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I get why you think that. 
but I'm not just saying it because I have to. I'm saying it because it's true. Jesus knows each and every single one of us by name, not because Jesus has to, but because Jesus wants to. Jesus sees you and wants to know you in a real personal way. Now I get that this is a hard thing for a lot of us to believe in. I understand why. I've been there because there's so many of us. Jesus doesn't seem all that personal. Maybe you feel like he's too big to notice you. If he's big enough to create this entire universe, then how could he possibly know us personally? We're not nearly that important, right? Or maybe you feel that way because it doesn't seem like he's there. You can't see him or hear him talk back to you. How can he know you so personally if you haven't heard or seen him? Maybe you feel like he's impersonal because you just don't know much about him. You're not sure if you believe in him or if he even gives you that much thought. That sure doesn't make him feel all that personal to you. You may even be wondering why you'd want to be known by him personally. To you, he's just someone who judges your every move or makes you follow a whole bunch of rules. You might think that he doesn't care about you, that he just cares about your behavior. But knowing you personally is about so much more than just knowing what you did right or wrong. Or maybe you feel like if he knew the real you, he wouldn't want to be close to you. The things that you have done, the mistakes that you have made, the thoughts that you think, those are the things that you don't want anyone to know about you personally. And no matter what you think or feel about Jesus, the reality is that Jesus does know your name. And it's not in some way that means that you're on his list or that he's got an eye on you. It's in a way that lets you know that to him, you matter. And he knows your name because to him, it's personal. To show what I mean, we're gonna take a look at an encounter that Jesus had while he was here on earth with a guy named Zacchaeus. It's found in the book called Luke, which was written by one of Jesus' closest followers. Now let me set the scene for you. Jesus was coming into the town of Jericho with a crowd all around him. Just picture it all around him. And by this time in his ministry, he had become pretty well known. People had seen Jesus do so many miracles, heal the sick, teach amazing things, and even saw him raise a man from the dead. Yeah. So basically, Jesus was a pretty big deal. And as Jesus was passing through this crowd, someone caught his eye. Someone caused him to stop. This is where we meet Zacchaeus. He has a little bit of a different reputation than Jesus. Now let's take a look. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Now, tax collectors in this time were viewed as being the worst, y'all. No one liked them at all. They cheated people out of so much money and because of that, people saw them as outsiders and as traitors. All of that to say that Zacchaeus was not popular at all. On that day, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. So as a shorter guy, he had to climb up a tree to get a glimpse. And in that tree, Zacchaeus got a lot more than he probably expected. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Now think about this. Out of this huge crowd of people, Jesus stopped and called out to just this one guy, Zacchaeus. Jesus called his name. How startling it must have been for Zacchaeus that Jesus not only knew his name, but that he said his name out loud. Jesus called to him in front of everyone. Remember Zacchaeus, he was not popular with the crowd and Zacchaeus knew it. He probably knew that Jesus knew it too. So to have Jesus not just notice him in that tree, but notice him by name, 
That was a big deal. That made it personal. And in that one moment, Jesus communicated that what he saw in Zacchaeus was different than what the rest of the world thought of him or saw in him. Jesus communicated that Zacchaeus had value to him. Zacchaeus was seen, he was known, and was valuable to Jesus, no matter what anyone else thought of him, no matter what he even thought of himself. And what's cool is that this is how Jesus sees us. He not only knows our name, but he calls it out. He uses it. He sees us for who we are. We are valuable creations of a loving and a personal God. When Jesus calls you by name, he's inviting you into a life with him. And when we accept that invitation, our relationship with him, it becomes real. It becomes personal. Personal began for Zacchaeus when he realized that Jesus knew his name, and the same is true for you. It's personal because Jesus knows your name. So what does this mean for you? How does this change the way that you see yourself or Jesus or even the other people? For some of you, it might begin with taking one step towards knowing more about Jesus. Zacchaeus climbed a tree to get a glimpse of Jesus. This was his first step towards personally experiencing Jesus. So maybe you need to climb a tree or take a step for yourself. No, not an actual tree. I mean, just take a step to get to know more about Jesus in a real, in a personal way. Ask questions about Jesus or talk to your group leader about some of the things that might be holding you back. You can even look up the story of Zacchaeus yourself to get started. Whatever it is, take a step to help you know the one who knows your name. Others of you know Jesus in a personal way. You stepped into a relationship with him and you know the value of being close to a personal God who knows your name. Because of what Jesus did for you, you can do the same for others. You see, Jesus doesn't just invite us into a relationship with him. He invites us to know names alongside him. Check out the command he gives us to all his followers. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. In this passage, Jesus told us first to love him and second to love others, to make it personal to the people in our lives. Now we can do this by first knowing their name. Just like someone knowing our name makes us feel seen and valued, when we know someone's name and use it to talk to or about them, it gives them the same feeling. It's a simple act that lets someone else know that you care about them in a real and a personal way. And remember, it's personal because Jesus knows your name. The reason I want to talk about this stuff is because I really believe it has the potential to change your life for the better. That personal relationship with Jesus, I want that for each and every one of you. And I want you to have a place where you feel seen and where you feel known and where you feel valued and a place where everybody knows your name. So as you head to your group, I want you to remember that it's personal because Jesus knows your name. And then think about this question. How does it make me feel when someone knows my name?